Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another one for the DIY homebrew catalog. Yeah, I seem to get all these homebrew projects from radio amateurs. And this is this is of course because I'm a radio amateur myself and because I go to radio amateur flea markets and auctions and all that kind of stuff. So this is where I meet these folks and I love to buy all sorts of homebrew stuff. This one is a receiver only and it will do uh, 20 meters and 80 meter bands. And uh, for those who are, who are not familiar with the radio amateur slang, it is 3.6 megahertz or 14 megahertz uh, band. And you can you can do AM, but you can of course do single side band. Uh, that's the most normal thing to do. Maybe you're old enough to know about this. So this whole tuner part here is a reuse of a 1930, 1920, like a really really old AM radio. All this is completely reused from one of these. And I think that this is also a reuse or a remake. The case is, looks like it's homebrew, but it's very well made. We got some screws here. You can see the aluminium pieces here. They are screwed from the top to the bottom. And we got some nuts down here. And then it is carefully sanded. Let me show you here in the paint. Look at that. This is a screw right there. It is that carefully sanded and polished. See, we've got some screws here holding this little piece of aluminium. I don't know if I can get a good shine of the screws. But it's really, really well made, this case. And even the knobs, they are hand turned on a lath. I mean, home brew. Really? Even the feet, home turned. Ha! <laughs> Aluminium. Nice, nice. Nice done. Good work there. And everything is completely reused or redesigned uh, homebrew or a remodeled of something. I mean, th this is made by a guy with this radio amateur call sign OZ4EF. And I believe this is as old as the start as uh, of 1970. Yes, this is about 50 years old. And back in the days, radio amateurs had a lot of patience and a lot of skills, but absolutely no money at all. So, <laughs> that's why you make your own receiver out of bits and pieces and parts you could find and salvage from all sorts of whatever. I think this one is already without the screws here. So there is a big chance I can just push out the entire. Nah, I need two hands to figure that out. Let's have a little closer look. Yeah, I was right about that. It was just stuck. So, so the idea is you just pull out the entire unit from the case like that. See, that is what I was trying to tell you about how this case is built. Completely homebrew. And then polished and sanded and painted. Just too bad I don't have this lid. And that's of course a nice little supporting <laughs> piece here. Well, yeah, I totally love it. It's a, it's a good idea. You can just pull this off, take a little screwdriver and adjust something here and get this thing up and running. It's, of course, 
you you must try and imagine back in 1970 when somebody nobody had any money for anything right so this case and this design was probably in use for many different versions of this or many other things you see we got some leftovers of all sorts of holes and this is what i see on all of those designs from from that time that all the different things it was completely yeah full of all sorts of reused holes see we got the different parts here and and so on that's of course the mains transformer probably also reused from something yeah let, let's have a look at the back it's just amazing look at all those millions of screws <laughs> and some of most of them got threads made we got lots of extra threads extra holes some extra holes left leftovers i kind of like the way that this case here is uh, made this is very very stable design and then you will be able to access you know quite a lot of the the unit see this is a power supply circuit board drawn by permanent marker and then etched <laughs> oh yeah yeah so this is um yeah yeah a little wire here i think i'll be able to fix that some bolts so we got this piece here is definitely taken out of that radio unit and see the variable capacitor here it was of course for am radio much lower frequencies right so that means this variable capacitor here had too many of these pieces in here creating a much too high capacitance when it's all the way in here right so to avoid you just need to use this little piece of the movement he removed a lot of these so now the entire range here is exactly what he wanted that is a fun way to do it it looks also like it was stored with this side down on the side because the circuit boards up here they are nice and clean but down here they're full of dust look at that 50 years of dust so there's a crystal oscillator down here right and that is probably the fixed oscillator for bfo or a carrier recreation in single sideband you mix your final product and then you generate a zero hertz beat and also the audio is recreated that is how a um, single sideband works so here's the antenna connector um, probably i'm gonna show you yeah i can i can more or less see the entire block diagram just by looking at this because I used to design radios myself, so I can I can show you a little bit here of what is going on. So the radio uh, the antenna signal goes in here. Here is a low pass filter, and this is wide band because this covers both twenty and uh, eighty meter band, and then the signal goes to this switch here. That is the twenty or eighty meter band switch. And then the signal goes down here. So there's a pre-amplifier where you tune these two here. So we've got some transistor amplifier here and transistor amplifier here. And then you fine tune to the band you want to receive. And then it goes to the main receiver and is, of course, mixed down to this is the variable local oscillator vfo and it goes into all the 
different mixers and stuff like that. This is IF. We got uh, super nice filters here so that you can do it. I'm actually a little bit impressed they're able to do single sideband with these, but it's because they're using active amplification here. Uh, those are a little bit special op amps. Uh, let's see if we can get a better picture on those. They're called CA3028A. Um, those are special op amps, very capable of handling those uh, resonant circuits at a very high Q. So this way you can get very, very nice uh, narrow bandwidth. And that is, uh, of course, needed for single sideband. And that's a very special and funny little plug-in board here. I don't know exactly why it is a plug-in board, but this is, again, homemade circuit boards and everything like that. So, and all these boards are also homemade. That will be the power supply. And here is a little audio amplifier. We've got two power transistors. Let's see if we can show that, see? Two little power transistors there and a few little drivers and such. So, oops, is this falling out? I hope not. Yeah, so there's a potentiometer here that is not in use. This wire was cut and it's completely removed. It is not in use anywhere else. And I also think that there was a circuit board in here that has been removed and also what we can see is the signals down here to that circuit board and to the next stage here so it has been ripped so this means we're not gonna get any kind of audio output from the IF system and to the IF amplifier and all, and then down again here we can see it goes to the audio amplifier and all that so it's going to be completely silent because we miss this um, unit and probably the designer needed this board for some other little project as just just borrowed it for a funny little project but it just means that we are definitely not able to get anything out of this unit but i just really wanted you to see radio amateur spirit homebrew kind of thing you can imagine thousands of hours and a lot of wisdom and knowledge went into the design of stuff like this and i see a lot of these things transmitters receivers and such on the local flea markets but it's definitely from the 70s and 80s and and so on Back in the days where radio amateurs were the really, really smart, clever dudes that could definitely make their own receivers and transmitters and all that kind of stuff. Today, the motivation of homebrew is more or less completely gone. You can buy ready-made equipment that cost a fraction of the parts in this receiver. So why would you bother? Why would you prove to anybody or to yourself even that you can design and build stuff yourself because you got plenty of pocket money and uh, you can just buy stuff yeah so yeah things definitely changed but I really like this one So thank you very much for watching and that was another little DIY show off Radio Amateur Intelligence 1970. Bye bye.